was usually despising on the hating and the changes and not notably ones is Sonic the Hedgehog. By critics and bad reviewers, bashing on 3D Sonic games can't work. 2000 sucks by the 90s kids because the shows they never watch don't like it since it's not from their generation. And Crash fans simply having too much hatred on Crash Bandicoot games such as Crash of the Titans and Mind of Immune since the games are not classics and it did not feel like that generation of Crash Bandicoot. What about Looney Tunes having hatred? The moment you are looking for it is The Lunatics Unleashed Aired from September 17, 2005 to May 5, 2007 What is Lunatics Unleashed? Lunatics Unleashed is a superhero action show based on Looney Tunes Descendant with futuristic settings. The writers and creators of the show is Adam Trevor Grant and Joseph Lewis Grant, known for creating a bizarre prototype that fears with Darth Vader. After one child and other people got negative reactions to the design. Meanwhile, out on the playground, the idea of the rabbit redo didn't leave him laughing. What do you think, Kenny? Uh, that's an evil bug, Bunny. I think it is. <laughs> he has very evil eyes. Kids WB decides to redesign the lunatics into more of an anime-like American anime cartoon and action hero cartoon from probably late 90s and early 2000s. Hmm, pretty similar culture, huh? Then the Looney Tunes got negative or mixed reactions because of the change or they think the Looney Tunes are getting another reboot in the wrong way. It seems like it was getting used to nowadays. Well, it ran for two seasons and 26 episodes. Despite they have 14 episodes in each season. By the way, Danger Duck is my favorite lunatics. My opinion. Who are the characters? It seems cool to me. And there are six main characters based on Looney Tunes. Ace Bunny is the martial arts bunny that wears a yellow uniform. He's the descendant of Bugs Bunny and he was voiced by Charlie Schlatter. He took the teamwork seriously, and he was an actor by doing his awesome action before he was a superhero who was 21 years old. He also thinks that the black velvet was hot despite of me be having crush on Lexi. Or well, Lexi was Ace's sister or cousin. His voice acting is more of a serious version of Bugs Bunny. And I actually like his voice acting. His character fits the voice actor and I could accept his voice acting. One goes down and now it's Lexi's turn. Lexi Bunny is the only girl lunatic who is the descendant of Lodo Bunny. She has her superpowers with her sonic hearing brain blasts and know how to grow plants in the episode a Apocalypso Apocalypso her relationship is very close to her brother or cousin Ace Bunny even though that I have a usual name Sonic 12 Lexi which is Sonic year 2012 and Lexi Bunny she was voiced by Jessica DeVico and her character is actually good with her voice and her superpowers. By the way, the best part of her is when she says that she was in the spotlight like Danger Duck and she is 20 years old. We are waiting for this. The next one is going to be Danger Duck is the most selfish duck with a sense of money. 
being a boss even though he is not technically the boss of the lunatics and nicknaming Zaldavia Boss Lady. His powers was to teleportation to another location, Pojag's flames to throw at anything and Aqua Dance in the episode A Creep in the Deep and Cape Duck where he is only able to use his powers on the water. He was voiced by Jason Marsden and his voice is almost close to Daffy Duck since Danger Duck is the descendant of Daffy Duck. The reason why I pick him as a favorite character of the Lunatics because of his personality compared to others which is completely different and his attitude about himself being a boss and wanted to add something to D Zeldavia like in the episode Lunatics on Ice. Time for a hungry devastation of a greedy Tasmanian which is strong. Slam Tasmanian is the strongest one with his tornado spin and is best known for I'm a Slamsis. He is the descendant of Taz the Tasmanian Devil. He has his power to use a spin tornado without his full body in it. Probably he is kind of a cyborg to make one of his body parts to turn into a tornado. <clears throat> he is voiced by Kevin Michael Richardson, known for the same voice as Teki Coyote. We will get to that opinion on him to Teki Coyote. Teki Coyote is a mechanical genius who built technology and uses his gun, magnet, and as well as healed just like Swampfire after he was shot or killed. Probably nobody would even kill that coyote with any weapons at all. He can just revive himself. One of the best moments in the episode Cloak of the Black Velvet when he was trapped before he got brainwashed. The Comet Comet where the episode, best episode story shows and he makes his invention yet. World is my circus where he finally gets one shot of the, of the villains. He is the descendant of Wild E. Coyote who has been hurt all the times and would win against Roadrunner. <laughs> He is voiced by Kevin Michael Richardson, known for the same voice as Slam Tasmania, and both of these voices are great. So one more superhero to go, and that's Rev. Rev Runner is the one who talks way too fast, with his sonic speed boost, flames running from him, and he can fly faster like any other birds, but not all birds. Bro since he was the descendant of Roadrunner. He is the only version of Roadrunner that gives him a proper voice. English. In a proper English. He is voiced by Rob Paulson, who is known to be voiced Gordon Quid, Yako Warner, and Bubsy the Bobcat in an unaired cartoon pilot. Pretty neat voice actor, huh? I guess we've done all of the characters. So now let's go to the God of the Lunatics. Zadavia was originally going to be named Maxima. She has no ancestor probably, which she was a completely her own, who is being the main general of the Lunatics, shown in screen on almost every episode, which shows her visual appearance in the season 1 finale and her brother Optimetus was formerly evil until the later seasons. She was voiced by Shandy Milo which her voice sounds futuristic. The story about Lunatics Unleashed is usually have a stronger big villain that has the powers to take over at Metropolis and then Zaldavia tells the lunatics 
that the villains have taken over the world and then Ace Bunny says Ben flies to the location of the villain they fight over him or her or them and what they're up to and what happened before they turned into a villain when the mediocre rock hits the Admetropolis the villains take their revenge on one or the other way then the lunatics fight back with more power and an another situation and then the lunatics won while the villains go to prison or fainted out the best episode that I would ever said is the comet comet is where the lunatics remember the past and then rediscover the comet that hits the earth before they have become a superhero they went to the moon and destroyed the meteor before it hits the earth once again and I actually love this episode and brings a lot of memories from my childhood there are villains in the show such as Weather Vane who controls the weather Black Velvet who turns the city into darkness Ringmaster who mutated humans into animals Pierre Le Pou, who was not letting Slam win the wrestling competition Massive who controls the gravity Dr. Dare who turns living things into stones or create a mutated stone Cypher who drains the lunatic's power into his a mastermind who is the rival of tech with the same power but her plans has been more into scientific ways the villains in the show are very original and it sounds like these villains are exactly different and it sounds amazing that the villains would do while the lunatics may fight them back by eventually by the plot before there were villains that lost their job, saw the meteor, and then they would unleash their revenge. The musics aren't very memorable at some times since there is no OST of the Lunatics on YouTube and was composed by Thomas Chase Jones since he produced two intro in each season. The first season has a story background telling with all the six main characters, their powers, and their years from 2005 to 2772. The music sounds very dark and epic, which is the best music I ever heard. The second season is alright, but they bring back the classic Looney Tunes, and not just the heroes. The lyrics are kind of annoying at some point since it doesn't make much sense for the show. The music overall is mostly decent and a very few memorable soundtracks but still have no name. This show has some great characters personality and quite unique in their voice acting as well. Their story is very simple and light and dark hearted to add more satisfying scene to it. It has well good background story and awesome catchy season 1 music, while the rest of them kind of meh or forgettable. The villains also make a great plot and without them causing the lunatics fight for at least nothing. The lunatics is a spin-off of Looney Tunes, not reboot, not a sequel or revival of the Looney Tunes, spin-off or not canon to the main Looney Tunes. The reception was first discussed with the designs until many years later assumed to be underrated. Does the Lunatics to me being hatred? I would say no. The Lunatics and Leash got 9.1 out of 10. But I highly recommended you to watch it if you haven't seen it before. Thank you. But I'm not forcing you to stop liking it. 